Welcome to your annual cybersecurity training program. I'm Robert Langel with Hidalgo County IT Department. Let's get started. This training will not only help you develop habits and procedures to protect the county's data resources, it will also help you protect your own personal information from cyber attacks. The awareness training is designed to help you detect and identify basic security threats to county information. You will be able to report these threats using best practices and procedures, and you will also learn the different types of information. This will help you in keeping Hidalgo County in compliance with Texas Government Code House Bill 3834. The first part of your training will be defining information security, the different types of information, the forms and locations that information assumes, safeguards in regards to access use of data, what defines secure storage, and how to securely dispose of or sanitize hardware that may hold data. The second part of your training consists of defining what a threat means regarding data. What are threat actors? What does risk mean to technology? How data can be attacked? Indicators of common attacks? How to respond and report? And spear phishing and how it works. The framework for our definitions and technology are modeled after the federal department known as NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. According to NIST, information security is the practice of protecting information by mitigating or reducing the risks associated with the information by preventing or at least reducing the probability of unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification, destruction, or corruption. Keyword here is unauthorized. All these activities happen on a daily basis but they must be authorized. There are three core tenets of information security. Their primary focus is a balanced protection of data. This is because there is an equalization of each core component to ensure functionality, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality is the prevention of unauthorized access and use of information resources. What is secret should remain secret. Integrity is the prevention of unauthorized changes to data and ensuring its validity and reliability, data that has not been tampered with. Availability establishes that resources are accessible when needed. An example are county departments that run 24 seven and need access to our resources to function and provide services when needed. These three components are known as the CIA triad. Combined, these core components provide information security. On the next slide, we'll dive in a deeper into each of the components. Let's begin with confidentiality. There are several methods to keeping restricted information secured. Some are administrative controls, such as agreements or policies for employees or vendors. Others are physical controls, like the door access or surveillance cameras. There are also technical controls, such as software and or hardware systems throughout our network. Some examples would be the credentials to log into your computer, encryption and monitoring software, or any combination of these, which are part of the county's requirements and regulations. Here are some examples of the administrative controls which are listed in the Hidalgo County Acceptable Use Policy. All employees are expected to follow these policies. Unlawful access into a computer or file is prohibited. Minimal personal use, that is using your computer for personal business. Sharing of passwords is also prohibited. And unapproved software installations. Installing unapproved software can infect your computer and can spread throughout the network and maybe even worse, infect the entire county. These controls are in place to help govern how we handle personal identifiable information 
known as PII. PII is any representation of information that permits the identity of an individual to whom the information applies to be reasonably inferred by either direct or indirect means. Social security number, birth certificate, or driver's license. It is the combined and linkable information to an individual. We just covered administrative controls such as the acceptable use policy, physical controls like access cards and security cameras. Now let's look at technical controls such as multi-factor authentication or MFA used as a secondary verification when you log into your computer. With so many breaches out there, this is highly recommended. Antivirus is also a form of technical control, as is the firewall, which is an appliance that monitors the in flow from our network to the internet, both inbound and outbound. And of course, VPN, which has become critical due to COVID. This is an encrypted connection from a computer outside of our network into our internal systems. Integrity in this case means guaranteeing the data of information is genuine. County data should be monitored and guarded against unauthorized modification making sure the data is valid. There are tools that help detect unsanctioned changes in our information resources. These systems can detect unapproved activity in our environment, monitor system health and status. Hash technology is used to validate the integrity of each file. There are hash values unique to each file, much like a fingerprint is unique to an individual. If a file is modified in the slightest, such as the removal of a period at the end of a sentence, the entire hash value changes. These various technologies work together to support the integrity of information resources. Now let's look at availability. Authentic confidential information is only of use when it is available when needed. Availability has to do with dependable and expedient access to information. How do we achieve high availability? Through the development and planning, identifying mission critical functions and main support components needed to continue in light of potential degraded system services. We plan for continuity of services, whether the outage is caused by weather, disaster, or outages. Data and server systems are continuously backed up for contingency purposes. Currently, Hidalgo County is in the process of building a DR site that will ensure continued services regardless of disruption. Moving on from the three core components, let's look at the data types. Public data is for everyone and is free access without reservation. This data usually falls under the Freedom of Information Act. Internal or sensitive is not for outside personnel. It is only for county employees such as our, our intranet. This information can be subject to release under an open records request, but it's not readily available. Confidential, this is only shared with personnel who need it to do their job. When sending through an email, it should be encrypted from end to end, and if you store it on Google Drive, it should be encrypted in case of unauthorized access to the drive occurs, either through mishap or by intentional means. This information is typically exempt from public view. Restricted or regulated information is never shared or copied unless authorized to do so. This is the most important information to be guarded. Examples would be social security numbers, credit card information, passcodes, or personal health information. This information is controlled by regulations such as HIPAA, CGIS, or PCI compliance rules. Depending on the types of information, access may be more or less, as well as the controls applied to the information. Let's look at the forms and locations information can take. Digital or electronic format. We are talking about Word docs, PDFs, text files, emails, 
anything that is digital. Paper documents or sticky notes with a phone number, we have clean desk policy that states sensitive confidential material should be removed from the end user's workspace when not in use or an employee leaves his or her workstation. You're also supposed to lock your computer when you walk away because the sensitive information may be on the screen if not in paper form. Information can also be a photo, whether physical or digital. Information can also be in the form of sound, as a person having a conversation on the phone or a voicemail left from a call. What about locations? Information can be stored in many locations from your computer, a USB, or an external drive. It can be stored in the cloud, a cell phone, or your file cabinet, or even on your desk. Be aware of the many forms and locations data can be and what your responsibilities are for keeping it safe. Best practices to safeguard our information and information systems. County policies are in place to help guard our data. County passwords should be unique to the county that means if you register on another site with your county email, do not use the same password you used to log into your computer. County policy dictates that county assigned emails should only be used for county business. County emails should not be used personally for TikTok or Facebook unless you manage the county social media. Then it would be acceptable. Your password should change every 180 days. That's every six months. When it comes to your password, sharing is not caring. Most of us don't share our credit card. We don't share our access card. So why would we share our password? Use a complex password when possible. The length of the password is more important than the complexity. A 22 character password such as trained, you will be secure is harder to crack than trained one with a complexity of an uppercase letter, symbol, and a number. As you can see, the first password would take 19 minutes to crack. The second one would take eight hours. The last one would take eight trillion years. This is according to this site called security.org, how secure is my password? Confidential or restricted data stored archived on paper should be secured in a locked cabinet or room only accessible by authorized staff. Data cabinets and closets should be secured under lock and key. Watch out for tailgaters. Tailgaters does not refer to the football fans barbecuing out of the back of their truck. Tailgaters is talking about people that enter a secured area right after you use your credentials to open the door. Unless you know the person walking in behind you, you can always ask that they use their own credentials to open the door. Never send confidential information by email unencrypted. Always lock or log out of your computer when you step away. And verify an email link sent from an unknown sender. Hover over the link and you'll be able to tell where the link goes to. If the link looks suspicious, do not click on it. Delete the email. Let's look at some best practice for securing and storing your data. Whenever possible, encrypt external data storage devices such as external drives or even your USB. And always save it to a map drive. I know it's sometimes more convenient to save it to your own computer. But if something happens to your computer, you lose that data, you're going to be looking everywhere to try and recover it. And if you can't, you might find a reprimand instead. So make sure you save it to the servers. Why is this? Because we have backups.
Practice proper disposal of secure information and records by sanitizing storage systems such as hard drives or USB drives. Some methods include degaussing a hard drive. This is applying a magnetic field to disrupt the data. Erasure or deletion of the data is another method, but still not secure. Overwriting the data is much better, but the best method of all is destruction. This will ensure that the data will not fall in unauthorized hands. A retention policy is best to avoid any issues with excessive backlogs, loss of time, and space and risk management. Research the compliance for your department. Back up the data as necessary. Archive data that needs to be retained. And try not to go beyond retention requirements on data. No sticky notes with passwords on your computer monitors, please. This is a violation of policy. This year, we have a new best practice topic, working remotely. Some county staff work from home. Try to use approved devices such as issued iPads and laptops that have antivirus and encryption available. Keep your devices updated. Don't ignore prompts to install updates. This is important when it comes to antivirus updates and security patches. Make sure your own home router is secured. Don't make a common mistake of leaving the default password. Use multi-factor authentication when possible and try to stay on a trusted network. Hackers are always trying to intercept your communications back to our network and trying to infect our network with malware. The sure way to protect against this is a VPN. A VPN will encrypt the connection to home base and make it hard for threat actors to get your data. This is especially crucial when on a public network. We're finally at the second part of our training. Don't worry, this is much shorter than the other. We'll be addressing the meaning of threat, threat actors, a cyber attack, and risk involving information security. When we mean threat, we aren't referring to your typical threats such as a wild dog or a venomous spider. Remember in an earlier slide, we defined information security being the protection against unauthorized access use, disclosure, disruption, modification, destruction, or corruption of data. A threat in the context of computer security refers to anything that has the potential to cause serious damage to an information system, electronic device, or network by unauthorized access use, disclosure, disruption, modification, destruction or corruption of data. Yes, it's almost the same definition. A threat may or may not happen, but has the potential to cause serious damage. Threats can lead to an attack on information systems, networks and more. When we speak of threats, we are meaning viruses, malware, or threat actors. What are threat actors? Any person or group that intentionally causes harm in the cybersecurity sphere, which includes computer devices, systems, or networks. They exploit weaknesses in computers, networks, and systems to carry out disruptive attacks on individuals or organizations. Let's look at the first threat actor. State-sponsored. Usually backed by a government entity, motivation is military, economic, or geopolitical advantage gained from attacks or intellectual theft on other nations. A hacktivist are motivated by ideology that advances their political or social views. Cyber criminals are often money motivated or trying to get some sort of financial gain. Be leery of urgent financial requests sent by email. Terrorists will sabotage electrical grids or water supply infrastructures for the sake of violence. 
similar to a hacktivist, but are willing to harm individuals. Then there's thrill seekers. They like to test their skills and are motivated by ego and personal reassurance. And of course, the insider. It's usually a disgruntled employee or one that is seeking personal gain. If you see something, say something. Let's look at the meaning of attack. An attack is an information security threat that involves an attempt to obtain, alter, destroy, remove, implant, or reveal information without authorized access or permission. It happens to both individuals and organizations. To understand risk in regards to information security, we must understand the how, why, and who. We are not referring to jumping on a motorcycle or coming home late to face the music. A security risk is any event that could result in the compromise of organizational assets through the unauthorized use, loss, damage, disclosure, or modification, all for the profit, personal interest, or political interest of individuals, groups, or entities. When an asset has a vulnerability, a threat can exploit this vulnerability, resulting in loss, damage, or destruction of the asset. This combination is what creates a cybersecurity risk. Next, we will discuss ways to detect, assess, and report information security threats, as well as how to address them. Currently, the most common attack is called phishing. Phishing is termed as such because of the similarity to the sport of phishing. Since this is the most popular form of attack, we will discuss in detail on the last slide. Malware is software that can harm your computer, server, network, gain access, or compromise your information or data. Social engineering is not a party for engineers. Social engineering is when someone successfully fools you into giving up your credentials or gets you to do something you shouldn't. Watch out for virus-infected websites. Even though we have several security measures in place, such as antivirus and web filters, all it takes is for the end user to click on the wrong link. You should only visit websites that have to do with county business. Ransomware is one of the most prevalent attacks currently in the digital sphere, usually aided by an individual that clicks on a link or opening an unknown attachment that they shouldn't have. The attack has become more sophisticated to the point of infiltration of the network and planting an executable file that will encrypt all our crucial data preventing access. This attack is usually followed with a message from the hackers demanding some form of monetary compensation, usually Bitcoin, for the key needed to unencrypt our own data. Some cities and schools have paid in the thousands and millions to get their data and systems operational. It can be a costly attack in more ways than financial the county's reputation would also be damaged. Be aware of what you click on. If you receive an email with a link, hover over the link to see where it will take your browser. Call IT if you're not sure about the legitimacy of the email and we will check to make sure it's okay. Do not engage the sender or give them any information. If you're unsure about the email, delete. Once again, if your computer is acting a little strange, call the IT department and we will help you slice up your computer. Ah, I'm just kidding. We will help you. If you see something out of the ordinary, please say something. Let your immediate supervisor know and please don't shut down your computer. It may detonate a file that will cause more issues. If you get a strange email, please don't reply. Send it to IT and we will check on its authenticity. Let's talk about spear phishing. As I mentioned in a prior slide, phishing is similar to the activity of catching fish. 
However, instead of a fish, the catch is personal information. Fishing is like throwing a big net out to see what information you get, like mass emails asking you to change your password. Spear fishing is more like going after a marlin or a specific type of fish. In this case, it may be one person with access to important data of an organization, such as an accountant or medical clerk. An email is sent to this individual and the person clicks on a link downloading malware to their PC. Often you will get an email stating that they have your invoice, delivery bill, or in today's environment, your COVID result as an attachment. Make sure you know the sender or how to check the validity of the email. If unknown, forward the email to IT without opening the attachment or clicking on the link and we will check its authenticity. Hover over the links in the email and make sure the websites are legitimate. Some of the key indicators are the request for a password or money with great urgency. Your password will expire. Your service will be discontinued. Or promises of a reward. Want to collect a million dollars? If it's too good to be true, well it probably is. Other signs are misspellings or incorrect grammar, such as Hidalgo City, or the word password in this example. Don't fall for it. The IT department will never ask you to reset your password through an email. Whaling is like spear phishing in targeting one individual, the difference being that the target is high profile person, such as the CFO or president of an organization. <clears throat> Maybe a tycoon that needs to be relieved of his money. Vishing is phishing through a call on the phone. It is a form of social engineering where a caller pretends to be the IRS and threatens you with legal action if you don't pay your dues over the phone. These heartless criminals usually target elderly or unsuspecting to take their life savings. Smishing is phishing through text. I'm sure you have received a text with a link stating that they have your shipment ready to be delivered at 4 p.m. tomorrow click here. Don't do it. If you don't know them, delete. If it's supposed to arrive, it will. Thank you for your time. This is the end of your training.